The last thing that we're going to look at here is how to fix the synchronization problem that we had talked about. So if you remember, with synchronization problems, what could happen is that we might have two or more threads trying to manipulate an object at the same time, and because of that, they could end up corrupting the data because they might be stomping on each other or interfering with each other and not leaving the data in a valid state. And that's because all these operations aren't atomic. What we had talked about was if you had a number that was being stored in a variable and you try to increment it in one thread and decrement it in the other thread, it might actually end up doing the wrong thing because in between those states, it could have one thread could have gotten it while the other thread was in that method trying to increment it. So one way that we can prevent this in Java is we can use a synchronization or we can declare our method to be synchronized. And there's a few other ways that we can do this, but I want to show you the most basic example just so that you can understand how to alleviate these problems kind of at a, at a high level. And if you need to get more detailed versions of this, there definitely are some more out there. But this will get you some basic understanding and some basic ability to be able to accomplish this. So let's look at our printer class here. In this example, we had set up, we are basically running this continuous printer thread. And in this continuous printer, we're calling this print using cartridge method on our printer. Now, if I go into our print using cartridge, we can see that multiple threads would be entering this at one time. And in this example, it's not a problem because we're not doing anything with the internal state of the printer. So we're not going to really see an issue here. But just to demonstrate this concept, let's see what how these threads are interacting with this method right now. So I'm going to print every time that we enter this, I'm going to call, I'm going to print entered. And then I'm going to print out the actual ID of the thread. So we're going to do this thread dot current thread and then we're going to say get ID and that just gives you the ID of a thread all threads have their own unique ID I'm going to do the same thing when we exit the, this method so we're going to call this print line and we're going to print exited right here so what's going to happen is every time a thread comes into this method and calls it we're going to get entered we're going to get the message and we're going to get exited so if we look at what's going on here, I've got a thread pool set up. I set it up to 100, so all these threads are going to be running at one time. And let's run this and see what the results look like. So you can see here, I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top. We've got thread 8 entering, and then we have thread 11 entering. We have thread 10 entering, we have thread 9 entering, we have thread 13 entering, and then 10 is finally exited. It actually exited before 8. and then 10 entered and then 11 exited so we have all these threads entering and exiting at different times a lot of threads are entering before the other ones exit and anytime that that happens it's a potential for a problem here because it could be manipulating data and we might be expecting that everything in that method is operating as an atomic operation or as as one we don't want it to be interrupted especially if it's operating on some internal data for the printer let's say it was changing a page count or doing something with the printer and it was setting its state by having all these threads entering here they could be entering at different points where that data is not in a consistent shape or it might be corrupted by having all these threads enter so we can solve this problem really easily in Java. All we have to do is go into our printer class and we're going to change this. So this method is going to use synchronized. So now we just declare this as synchronized and this keyword in Java will make sure that only one thread can enter at a time. So all the other threads are going to block here waiting while one thread enters and goes through this. Now, if we run this, you can see how this is actually working. So I'm going to scroll up to the top here. And you can see here, we're getting thread 8 enters, thread 8 exits, thread 10 enters, thread 10 exits, thread 9 enters, thread 9 exits. Threads are not interleaving here between this method. So multiple th threads can't actually get into this method until the previous thread has gotten out. So that's the, the basic example here of using synchronize, and this is very useful whenever you have a method that you know is going to be accessed by multiple threads and it's manipulating some data, you need to use a synchronize call or somehow synchronize it so that multiple threads aren't interacting with that data or calling that method at the same time.